If you have an extra old PC lying around, you might be wondering what you can do with it. Well, you could always sell it or give it to a friend or family member, but you could also turn it into a home server, which is something I love to do. In this video, we're going to take a look at this budget gaming and streaming PC that I put together in a previous video and install something called Unraid to convert it into a home server that will allow us to easily store and share files, stream movies and shows from our own collection, automate smart devices in our house, host game servers, and potentially much more. Stick around to see how. So why would you even want to make a home server? Well, there are a lot of reasons, and to me, the first is storage. Having network attached storage, or a NAS, is incredibly helpful if you share files between multiple computers on your network, work with a lot of large projects and files like videos or photos, or just want an easy place to back up your devices. It's even better if you have redundancy, or where a drive in your NAS can fail without necessarily losing any data. You can also do a lot more with a home server, from streaming your personal movie or TV show collection with something like Plex or Jellyfin, automating your home with something like Home Assistant, hosting a game server like Terraria or Minecraft, even hosting your own website, and really so much more. Today, we'll be doing most of what I just mentioned. We're going to set up a network share, host a Terraria server, install Home Assistant in a virtual machine, and use Jellyfin to stream shows and movies with the help of our GPU's hardware transcoding. And we're going to do all of this by installing Unraid onto this Lenovo Think Center that we looked at previously. If you're interested in following along, all you need is any working PC, a flash drive, and ideally a few spare hard drives for storage. Now, Unraid isn't free, but you can try it for 30 days using their free trial. And if you're wondering why we would use a paid software when things like TrueNAS and Open Media Vault exist, well, you have a great point. There are a lot of great operating systems and hypervisors out there, and many are free. But Unraid is extremely simple and polished in ways that some other platforms aren't. And I think it's great for someone wanting to get into the DIY or home server space. This PC currently has a 4-core 8-thread Xeon E3 1231v3, 16GB of DDR3 memory, a GTX 1650, a 128GB SSD, and a 650W power supply. We could get rid of the 1650 and swap out our 650W power supply for the original 180W power supply, and normally I think this is what I would do, because for most things, we don't need a graphics card. Well, technically we do, but not something as nice as the 1650, because unfortunately our Xeon doesn't have an integrated GPU, so we technically need some sort of graphics adapter for the system to post. But we could easily toss in something like this old Radeon card just to boot the system. But for storage, game servers, home automation, or anything like that, we don't need any graphics processing. However, the 1650 could come in handy if we wanted to be able to transcode video streams using something like Jellyfin. So for this video, we're going to go ahead and leave it in just because I think it'll be fun to set up hardware transcoding. We do need to make one hardware change to the system though, and that's storage. One of the cool things about Unraid is that it's really easy to use whatever drives you sort of have lying around, and also to add more drives in the future. I have these two 2 terabyte hard drives currently just sitting on a shelf, so we're going to use these in our server to hold all of our files and such. The SSD doesn't really help us here, so we'll go ahead and remove that. Now we could keep this SSD in here as well, but for this video we're going to keep things simple and just use these two hard drives. Now we just need one more thing, our boot drive. Now this might seem weird because you would never imagine booting your Windows machine off of a flash drive, but Unraid is actually designed to work like this, because other than occasionally changing configuration data, it rarely actually touches the flash drive. The OS runs entirely on system memory. With everything ready to go, let's go ahead and get this thing set up. 
Before we get started, I just want to be clear that I am by no means an expert, and so it's very possible that I might make some mistakes or do things that aren't necessarily best practice. Also, we had a baby not too long ago, and so I've been suffering from a few sleepless nights. So I just want to apologize now for all the dumb stuff I'm about to say here in just a few minutes. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do uh, here in Windows is just go to a web browser and go to Unraid's website. And if you go up here to where it says download, um, you'll be able to download this USB creator for Windows. While we're waiting on that, we can go ahead and plug in our flash drive. And then now that we have that downloaded, we can just go ahead and run this. And then here we're going to stick with stable. And the most recent version for me is 6.10.1. And then we'll open up this customize and we can go ahead and put a name here. So I'm gonna call this Haven Unraid. And then we're gonna stick with using DHCP. If you wanna use a static IP and you know what you're doing, more power to you, go ahead and do it. We're gonna use DHCP and then reserve that DHCP allocation later on. And then here where it says flash drive, just make sure you have your correct flash drive. And then we'll hit write. And this will take a few minutes, but once that's done, we'll get right back to it. Okay, now that it's done, we can go ahead and eject it. Okay, here's where I made my first mistake and somehow my camera didn't record properly. So I'm just recording this after the fact. The first thing we'll need to do is make sure our server is plugged into our network and then also plug in our flash drive as well as power. You won't need a monitor and keyboard in the future, but you should probably use it for the first setup just to make sure that your BIOS boots to the flash drive that has Unraid OS on it. Once it does, you can just hit enter or wait for it to boot into Unraid OS. Then you'll wait for a bunch of gibberish to fly down the screen. And eventually you should get to a screen that looks something like this with the name of your server. In this case, it's just tower because I recorded it after the fact, as well as an IPv4 address. You shouldn't need this IPv4 address, but if you run into any issues, it could be helpful. Once you get to this point though, you technically can go ahead and unplug your monitor and your keyboard or keep it up if you'd like. And we'll hop back over into Windows. So back in Chrome, we can type in HTTP colon forward slash forward slash and then my my server name which is Haven Unraid and then dot local and that should bring us here now if this doesn't work for some reason you can also type in HTTP colon forward slash forward slash and then the IPv4 address that shows up on the screen as well which for me is 192.168.1.235 so here, where it says username root, this is considered our access user, I believe. I can't remember. We'll see that in a bit. But yeah, this is our root user account, and this is what we'll have to use to access the web user interface. And so we can just make up a really strong password here. So use a much stronger password than I'm using. We'll hit set password. And we're in. Now, Unraid does give you a free trial that's 30 days, and then you can actually extend that, I think, 15 more days or 20 more days or something like that. Um, so it's a pretty decent trial if you want to try this out and see if it's worth spending the money on. So we're going to use this trial. And you see I actually only have 27 days left. That's because I was using this flash drive for some testing just to make sure I had everything ready for this video. So my trial is actually a little bit shorter, but um, I will be paying for this. So my trial is a little bit shorter than what you'll have, um, but 30 days is still a good amount of time to test this out and see if it's something you wanna do for your own server. We also have this message that pops up. Um, this My Servers feature, this plugin, we can go ahead and install it. It's not going to hurt. Cool, so that only took about 30 seconds or so. So we can hit done. And then at this point, I'm going to go ahead and sign in. And so you might need to create your own account. I have my account already. I'm gonna skip past that because I'm pretty sure you can figure out how to create an account. Okay, so we're signed into our account. For me, that's Hardware Haven. I still have 27 days on this trial because it's tied to my flash drive um, or the GUID, I believe, on the flash drive. So it's not tied to your account. Um, I'm not going to purchase just yet because this is the account I'm using to make this video, not my actual account, but Unraid is definitely worth purchasing. But for now, we'll just go ahead and hit continue trial and we'll get started. So on this first page, this is where we'll set up our array or our disks for our storage. 
And so if we go down here to disk one, we can see our two terabyte drives. So we're gonna select one of these, and this is going to be our, our disk where everything gets stored. Now we could go down here to disk two and select our second two terabyte drive. And if I scroll down, we'll see that for our array, we won't see how much storage we have, but it's we can do the math, it's four terabytes. But we'll see that this array will be immediately available but unprotected since parity has not been assigned. And we don't want that, we want parity. So we're going to unassign disk two and then assign parity one to our other two terabyte drive. So now the array will be immediately available but unprotected until parity sync completes and we want to have parity. So that's what we want. Now where it says pool devices here, we could, for example, put an SSD in here as a cache drive or a drive dedicated to Docker containers or virtual machines, but we're not going to do that in this video. That might be something I, I do in a later video or a later series of videos, but for now we're just gonna stick with our two, two terabyte drives in a really simple parity setup here. So we can go ahead and hit start, hit proceed. It's gonna erase everything off of the disk we're assigning as a parity drive, but there's nothing really on these disks to begin with, so not a big deal. And there's a really good chance you will see this unmountable, unsupported, or no file system on our disk one here, and that is totally okay. All we have to do is right here where it says format, we'll hit yes, I want to do this, and we're going to lose all of our disks, our we're going to lose all of our data now that was potentially stored on disk one, which is totally okay. Hit format, and then give this a few minutes to complete. All right, great, so we got this little notification here that Parity Sync has started. That means our disk is formatted and ready to go. So right now, because the Parity hasn't synced, um, we don't have Parity, so if this disk were to die, we will lose all of our data, but we really haven't done much, so it's not that big of a deal. Now this will take quite a bit of time. You can see it trying to predict down here an estimated three and a half hours. It keeps going down, but it's still gonna take quite some time and it's gonna take even more time as we're working on it because we can start working on this server even though we don't have our parity set up just yet. So the first thing I wanna do is set up a user. So we have this root user that's under management access. That's what I was trying to think of earlier. And this is the user account we would use to access the Unraid web user interface. Um, but we actually wanna have some users for share access. So we'll hit add user. And I'm just going to call this Haven. Uh, no description. For fun, I'll just drag a picture in here. For fun, I'll just drag a picture in here. Okay, that didn't work. I guess I'm going to have to actually select it. Oh well. And then for password, we'll put once again a really secure password. Actually do that, that's important. And then now we should have our Haven user here. And that's great because we're going to set up a share. Now we have these default shares here and this is actually when we access this NAS, these are basically going to show up as folders that we can access. Um, by default, none of these are publicly available so we can't actually access these but we might want to down the road, especially if we're going to install any VMs or Docker containers or other things like that, which we are. So the first thing I'm going to do though is add our, our own custom share. So I'm just gonna call this Haven share, no comments. Allocation method, we can just leave this as high water. You can look into why you might wanna use a different allocation method. Minimum free space, we're gonna leave that at zero kilobytes. Split level, we'll keep this the same. Included disks, all. Excluded disks, none, and we're gonna hit add share. Great, so now that we have this share made, we can set up SMB so that we can actually access that share from our Windows machine. So here where it says export, we're going to hit yes. We can leave this the same, except no, we won't. <laughs> we're gonna set this to private. And that's going to make it that you have to sign in as a user to be able to access this folder. So now that we've set this to private, guests don't have any access, and our Haven user right here, we can give this read write access and hit apply. So now in File Explorer, if we go down to Network, hopefully we should see this Haven Unraid here. And if we click on that, it's gonna make us use our user that we made, so Haven, and then your super secure password. We can hit remember. And we should now see this Haven share, which is pretty cool. And I should be able to add files to it. Let's see really quick. So if I drag this picture, it should now be in our shared folder. That's great. 
Now, one thing we might want to also do, we definitely want to do actually, is set up these shares that are already here, such as ISOs and domains, to also be accessible from our Haven user. So I can go to ISOs, for example, and under SMB settings, I should actually be able to say read settings from Haven share and hit read. Will this work? Okay, it sort of did, but not security. We want private. We can hit apply. Let's try this again. If we go to read settings from Haven share, Okay, yeah, and gave our, our user rewrite access. So that kind of worked, but we'll hit apply. And then we're gonna do this for domains as well. And we'll talk more about what these actually do. You could also set this up as yes, hidden, and then it wouldn't show up by default in this folder unless you mounted to that folder specifically, but we'll keep it just yes, but make it private so that you have to have user access to get there. So just doing the same exact thing, giving our Haven user read write access and then app data as well. All right, with that done, if we go back to our file explorer and we go back to Haven Unraid, we'll see our share we made, Haven share, but we should also see these other shares that don't have anything in it yet, but we'll get there. Let's check in and see how our parity is doing. We still have two hours and 20 minutes. Cool. We're not going to wait for that to finish. We're going to start doing cool stuff. So we already have basically our NAS set up because we can put files on here. We can make new folders and we should be able to should be able to access these from any computer on our network as long as they can log into our Haven user. So that is pretty cool. Our NAS minus the parity that needs to be finished. But minus that, we basically have our storage set up. So one of the first things I want to do is actually head over to this apps thing here and we have to click install to be able to access the community applications this is super quick and we're going to hit i understand on this disclaimer that these are made by third parties and they could do dangerous stuff so make sure you know what you're doing and be smart and yeah all that good stuff we'll skip past it but this is one of the things that makes unraid really 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 cool is that people can make these apps that are pre-made um, some of them are docker containers some of them are plugins but people can make these apps that you can basically just drag and drop almost to your home server and do lots of cool things. So for example, we're gonna make a Terraria or Terraria, don't don't come at me. We're gonna make a Terraria server. I'm trying to remember, is it Terraria? We're gonna make a Terraria server. So I just searched for Terraria and we have this ICH777. I don't know if that's itch777, not really sure. But anyways, we're going to pull up this little guy and you can read some of the information on it. There's some cool stuff here, but we're just gonna hit install. And this is gonna bring up a template and you can read some of the instructions, but if we scroll down and um, we can skip a lot of this stuff, it should already be pretty much set up for us. But you'll see we have this server files location. And so this is actually going to be in our app data share that we, we talked about earlier. We have this preferred Terraria version, which I'm not really familiar with the version, so we're just gonna leave this at 1.4.3.6, but you could potentially change that if you want. Um, and then we have game params, which I'm not entirely sure what you would put here. We're just gonna leave that as well. And then we're gonna leave the TCP and the web console TCP ports the exact same, but you could change these if you'd like, and then we'll hit apply. And this will take a few minutes because it has to actually download the files for the server, and then it'll take a few minutes to spin it up. But here in just a little bit, we'll come back and we should have a working Terraria server. Okay, so after a few minutes, this is done. We can hit done, hit close. And if we head over to this Docker section here, this is where we have Docker containers running. And if you're like not really familiar with what Docker is, don't worry, that's kind of some of the magic of Unraid in these apps, is that you don't really have to know sort of what's going on under the hood. You can just kind of run it and then I would encourage you to learn about Docker later, but you don't have to be like an expert with this stuff to get it up and running. So we see this has started, versions up to date, everything kind of looks good. And we can actually, if we want to click on this right here, hit logs and we should see, yeah, listening on port 777, that looks good, no errors or anything. And if we actually click this and hit web UI, this will pull up a little VNC viewer. I'm gonna make this a little smaller. But we can see it looks like our server, our server, our server spooled up, and we are in the command console. So if I type help, we can see a few commands we can actually do. Like if we want to kick some players or ban some players. Um, currently, if we type password, 
you can see the password for the server is just Docker with a capital D. We could change the password here. We could do a lot of things, um, but not quite everything. But right now it looks like our server is running. So let's actually go ahead and pull up Terraria. So we can go to multiplayer, join via IP. I'm gonna click my character Squidward here. And you can actually see when I was testing, um, I had this this already pulled up and it has the same IP address, but we're gonna type in our, our IPv4 address, 192.168.1.235, hit enter. Our port is 777, hit accept, and then we need that password, so that Docker. And we are in a Terraria server right now. Pretty cool. Um, but you might be like, well, that kind of stinks. Um, I didn't get to pick the world or the world size or even the little message of the day that, that pops up down here earlier. Um, and we can fix that. So we can actually exit out of this really quick. Hop back over into our server. Actually just hop back over into File Explorer. Go to our server and go to App Data. And we have this Terraria folder here now. So we can go in here and find this server config.txt. We'll open this up. And now we see we can change a lot of this stuff. There's a lot of things you can read, um, but we're going we are going to scroll down here, for example, where it says seed and uncomment this. So take away that little pound sign, hashtag, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to change this seed to Haven because yeah. And then we could change other things like we could make this an expert world if we wanted, or we could make the max players 12 instead of eight. We could change the port, but we're going to leave the port at 7777. And then we're gonna change the password to, of course, Haven. And then we could set the message of the day. So I'm gonna change this to stay curious. So we can change all these things and we can actually change the world size, I believe, where's that at? World size, oh yeah, right here, right here. Creates a new world if none is found, world size is specified by one, two, whatever. So we're gonna go auto create. We're gonna make a medium, so two. And then we can save this file. And now if we go up to our Terraria Docker container, we can hit restart. So this container is going to stop and then it's gonna restart and it's gonna look and see that there are changes in that server config. One of which was the, the world size and the seed and all that stuff. And if we go back to Terraria, to our server here. Oh, we didn't change the name of it. We just left it as world. That's dumb. Back to the config. Uh, world name, there we go. We're gonna change that to hardware instead of Haven. Mix things up, hit save. We're gonna restart our container. Then once it's good, we'll go back to Terraria, type in our new IP, or type in our IP address once again, 777. Now our password is Haven. And we are in our world. We can see our message says stay curious. I don't know how to confirm that we are in a medium world now, but this should be a medium world with the seed Haven. And yeah, we have a Terraria server. Now I'm not going to explain in this video how you can make this server publicly accessible. This is currently only accessible on your local network, which could be fun if you want to play with, I don't know, a sibling or family member or something. Um, maybe down the road, we'll talk more about how you could expose this to the public by opening up a port or some sort of tunneling service or something like that. There's lots of ways you could make this server public, but for now, it is just on our private network. So, so yeah, that's just where we're at, but this is still cool. We're running a Terraria server on our Unraid server. Lots of Terraria server on our Unraid server. Really cool. All right, what else can we do? Let's see, let's see where our drives are at. We're at two hours and 12 minutes, great. So let's set up a virtual machine. So we're gonna run a computer inside a computer, basically. And what I want to do is run Home Assistant OS. So if we go to Home Assistant's website, we can scroll down to Linux and find this Home Assistant Operating System VM. Click on that and Unraid uses what's called KVM. So we'll click on this KVM and get this .qcow2. Okay, now that we have this in our downloads folder, we actually need to decompress it because this .qcow2, I don't know how to say that, is actually an .xz file because it's compressed. So to fix that, we'll have to use something like 7-zip. Okay, so we use 7-zip to extract this. So now we just have this .qcow2, that's great. I'm going to copy this, so Control-C, then head over to our network, Haven Unraid and ISOs. I'm done, we don't want this in ISOs. I'm gonna move this from ISOs 
to domains. That was a mistake. All right, so we have this in our domain share now. My bad. Almost made a dumb error. All right, so we're going to go to add VM Linux. We'll change this icon to just the default. Um, we can change name to Home Assistant or Hass. You could do a description. We're going to leave CPU mode as pass through. We're just going to give this one CPU, so one CPU core, and it's a hyper thread there, or it's extra thread, multi thread, I don't know. Uh, two gigs of RAM, so 2048. We can leave machine and BIOS the same. USB controller, USB 2.0, EHCI, that's fine. Um, we don't have an install ISO. Instead, we have this primary VDisk location. We're going to change this to manual and then go to disk one, domains, and then this right here. I guess actually we should do user. I don't know. Let's just go user, domains, and then our little QCOW2 we had earlier. Um, we'll leave this at vert IO graphics card VNC. We can leave all of this stuff the same. You could do a VNC password if you wanted, and we can leave all of this network stuff the same. And that all looks good. We can just hit create. And so you see, it pulls up this VNC window. Now we can see that it's installing, it's doing its thing. We'll make this a little smaller and this is going to take a long time. Home Assistant takes quite a while to download and get set up. So we're just gonna let it run and do its thing. In the meantime, while that's doing what it's doing, we can go ahead and do something else that's pretty cool. We're gonna go back to the apps over here and we're gonna look for Jellyfin. So Jellyfin is pretty similar to Plex if you're familiar with that. It lets, basically it lets you take a, your library of movies and shows and stream it to your devices on your network which is pretty cool. And so if we were to go to this itch777 or ICH, um, we could download this or we could install this app and that would be really cool. But one thing that would be even cooler is if we had NVIDIA hardware transcoding. So we could use this GPU that's just kind of taking up space and power in the server. We could actually put it to use. But to do that, we're going to need some drivers. Fortunately, that's really easy to do. We can just hit close and we can search for NVIDIA drivers. And right here, also ICH777, we can hit install. This has additional requirements, which is a compatible NVIDIA graphics card, which we have. We can hit OK, let this run. Um, this will also take quite a little bit of time, but that's OK. We'll just let it keep doing its thing. OK, so it's done and we have this done button here. And so if we hop over to this plugins tab, we should see that we have our community applications plugin, which is how we're able to get to this apps tab. We have our my servers, which we installed at the beginning, and we have this NVIDIA driver thing. Um, there's some instructions you can follow on this. I might try to put the link in the description, but if you look right here, you'll see that it says, please make sure to disable and enable Docker if you installed the NVIDIA driver. So basically that just means we have to head over here to where it says Docker. Wait, no, I'm wrong. You would click this or you could go to settings Docker and we basically have to turn this off. So hit enable Docker, no, hit apply. And then once that's done, change it back to yes, hit apply. Great, and we can hit done. And if we go to plugins and we go to the NVIDIA driver plugin here, we should hopefully see our NVIDIA GTX 1650. Everything looks good. And so now we should have working NVIDIA drivers on our server, which means if we go back to the App Store and install Jellyfin, we can install this in a way to where we can actually use the hardware decoding or transcoding from our NVIDIA graphics card. So if we go to install, and I just went ahead and installed um, ICH777, H777s, just because that's also the, it's also from the repository where we got the NVIDIA drivers, so that seems like a safe bet. So I'll hit install. And there's quite a few instructions here. There's also instructions on the on a forum post that explains how to make sure you set all this properly up with, uh, with Jellyfin. So one of the first things we're going to do is add this dash dash runtime equals NVIDIA in this extra parameters. So we have to go to advanced, sorry, trying to remember all this. 
So right here where it says extra parameters, we're just going to hit space and then paste this dash dash runtime equals NVIDIA. You don't have to do anything else here. Now here we do want to have some paths for our, our different libraries. So I'm going to once again hop over into File Explorer and we're going to go to Haven Share and we're going to make a new folder here called Shows. Ah, shortcuts are better. Music and movies. And actually we're going to make a little parent director here called Jellyfin and move all these in there. So now here it says movies, we'll click this, we'll go to Haven Share, Jellyfin, movies. And then where it says TV shows, we're going to do the same thing, but shows. And then you guessed it, music. And then here where it says NVIDIA visible devices, we need to set this as our GPU UU ID. It's a lot of use. GPU UID. GPU UU ID, sorry. So if we go up here to plugins, I'll open it in a new tab, and we can copy paste this. And then we'll leave all of this the same. And we should be able to hit apply. Oh, we just removed this, sorry. Because we don't have an Intel or AMD device. Do we have an NVIDIA device? We can hit apply. But actually don't because here's where I made another mistake. We actually need to add another variable so we can click where it says add another path, port, variable, label, or device. Select variable. Set the key to NVIDIA driver capabilities, all caps with underscores between. And then in lowercase, the value needs to be all. And you can name this whatever. I went ahead and just named it capabilities. Then you can hit add and apply and we should be good. And this should once again pull our image and get it spooled up. In the meantime, I'm going to hop over to our share here and I'm gonna copy some footage into our different folders. Okay, so off camera in our Jellyfin folder, under shows, I went ahead and dragged in from my own Plex server, uh, season one of The Office. And then under movies, I just dragged in this free 4K footage I found because I don't have any like 4K movies or anything. And we're gonna need something like that to actually put our GPU to use. But our Jellyfin install is done, so we can hit done, head back over to Docker, and we see now we have our, uh, not Terraria, our Terraria stopped, we have our Jellyfin here started. Um, and the reason Terraria is stopped is because we stopped Docker earlier and we didn't have this auto start turned on, which I'm actually going to uh, make sure this auto start is turned on. And uh, we could also set a wait here so to make sure that our array whenever our server maybe gets shut off and turned back on it gives time for our array to spin up before these docker containers try to start so you could set a uh, auto start wait but these should automatically try a few times to start so if there's any errors but yeah so we'll just leave that as it is i went ahead and started terraria back up and then here with jellyfin we should be able to go to the web ui and set up Jellyfin. So I'm gonna kinda of go through this whole start, quick start with the account and everything. You can probably do that on your own. So username, password, and we're gonna set up some media libraries. So first we're gonna do movies, and then here for folders, we'll just have to go to our movies folder we set up earlier. Hit okay, hit okay. And then we'll add shows, and we'll go to this slash TV is what it was that we set up, hit okay. Okay, then next, next, uh, we'll allow remote connections, sure. And then we're not gonna enable automatic port mapping. Hit finish, and then now we should be able to sign in with our user. And by the way, this is all happening on our IPv4 address on port 8096. But all our libraries should be scanned, so if I go to shows, I can pull up the office here and I can play an episode of The Office. So it was at this point in the video that I was going to show the hardware transcoding at work, which it wasn't going to be doing anything when playing The Office because it's a pretty low resolution and doesn't need transcoding. But when I got to this 4K footage, I was going to show off that you could see our GPU running a process on the right hand side. And you could also see that we were getting transcoding in this playback data section but it wasn't working because I didn't put that variable in that I mentioned earlier. But after getting it fixed, I was able to go back and play this 4K footage, 
and get hardware encoding working properly. And you can actually see over on the right hand side in that terminal, we have our GPU processes pulled up and you can see there's actually a GPU process where Jellyfin is using um, our GTX 1650 for hardware transcoding. So it is working. Oh, and in the Jellyfin settings, you'll also have to make sure that you have the hardware transcoding turned on and set to NVIDIA NVINC. Let's see how Home Assistant is doing. Okay, so it says this little error thing here. That actually shouldn't be that big of a deal. We should still be able to actually access our, if we go to the, down here, uh, interfaces, we see this 192.168.175. That is actually a new IPv4 address. We copy that, paste it, and then go to port 8123. We actually are here at Home Assistant. And because this video is getting pretty long, I'm not going to talk through the entire setup process for Home Assistant. That could easily be another video, but for the basic setup, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just kind of follow along and then it will try to discover any devices on your network that you can start configuring. So I just set up some lamps including two that I have in my little office area. And I was able to turn them on and off, change the brightness, change the temperature. And that was all I really set out to do. If you're interested more in Home Assistant, there's plenty of videos on YouTube and I definitely plan on doing more Home Assistant content in the future. There are a lot of other really cool things I think we could do at the server like this. And there's also some really important things we should do like setting up backups for our configuration, as well as our actual data. But I think I might do all of that in some future videos, and maybe even a tutorial series. If you'd like to see an Unraid tutorial series, let me know in the comments. And if there's anything specific you would like me to cover with Unraid, or just in general, comment that as well. If you liked this video and want to see more like it, make sure to check out the Hardware Haven channel and get subscribed. Also, consider leaving a like to help this video and maybe even check out my Patreon. That's about it for this one though, so thanks for watching, stay curious, and I hope to see you in the next one.